Good morning lads. Today, unfortunately, we are heading home. And I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew before I left that if you want to stay at the best hotel close to Ebisu Circuit, literally seven minutes away, Google search these guys. Mount.in. Alright, literally the best. They're really close. They've got a simulator downstairs. Pretty much, they're very supportive of the drifting community in Ebisu Circuit. Good friends with Kumasan, so it's definitely worth it. We've got a three hour and uh, like 50 minute drive home. Not taking into account PA stops or anything like that. That, uh, it's a little bit sad, honestly. I should have drifted today and just driven home tonight, but I knew I would have been way too wrecked to edit a video, so sometimes it's best to just take a day off. That's what we're doing. All right, let's get home. Got an hour left in the drive, and I had to make a stop for some Starbucks. Getting a little bit drowsy. Not gonna be a good time if I fall asleep at the wheel, so we gotta stay awake. Nearly home. So it is now the next day. Um, last night when I got home, edited the vlog, which took a long time because it was a beast of a video. Then two, I had to pack all the merch orders that come in over the weekend, and I was doing so until about 4 a.m. Um, but as you guys can probably see behind me, we are pretty much sold out on a bunch of stuff and I am so thankful and thrilled at how well uh, this merch drop went. And uh, I just wanna say thank you so much to each and every one of you who supported me and grabbed some merch. Um, it means a lot to me and I'm super hyped for the next merch drop. I'm already starting to work on it. It's gonna be Chaser themed, so keep an eye out for that. There's gonna be some cool stuff coming. But in saying that guys, if you haven't grabbed yourself anything yet, jump on the site and grab some, semit.net. We still have a fair few of the uh, Function Over Form shirts and the Yada ones here. So jump on those while you still can. And there is limited sizes left in the Skyline and the Evo Save the Legends shirt. Um, we've all always got stickers, air fresheners and stuff in stock, so jump on those as well. But for now, we have to get the S15 prepped for tomorrow's drift event. Yes, I am driving tomorrow in the S15. I'm pretty excited to see if any of the technique I learned in the chase is gonna convey across to that chassis. I think it will, and I think it's gonna be cool. Um, but yeah, we gotta go get the S15, get those 17s off, put 18s on, and then go to Yashio factory, see what Okachan's up, change tires and all that lovely stuff, and then we'll be ready for tomorrow. Um, that being said, guys, yesterday's vlog was a mammoth of a vlog, and um, I had a bunch of footage of just raw driving and stuff left over that didn't actually make it into the video, just because it was already 33 minutes long. I'm considering rebooting my second channel called Semit Live, where I used to only do live streams there. I'm thinking of renaming it, and we're gonna, I, I want to just post a lot more of that raw kind of style footage um, that won't make it into the vlogs and stuff like that. If that's something you think is interesting and you'd watch, please let me know in the comment section. But for now, uh, let's get the S15 and get things prepped. Finally getting some uh, big girthy tires back on the rear of this thing. We're running these 215s on here from that competition just because I was too lazy to switch these back on. <sighs> Tire changing things. And there we go, 18s back on the rear of the S15. Looks much better now. Now, I can take off my competition number. I've been too lazy to do. <laughs> I need to give this thing a wash really bad. Look at all the rubber flicks and stuff there. Oh man, we'll probably do that at Yashio Factory after I change all the tires. I kind of liked having the uh, competition things here. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, we're definitely washing this. I was not expecting paper to leave marks like that. That kind of sucks. We're definitely giving this thing a wash. <sighs> well, this thing, oh man, I'm actually so excited to drive this tomorrow after being fresh in the chaser. I know this thing's gonna, I'm probably gonna spin out on the first couple goes because I'm not gonna be expecting this thing to over-rotate as fast as it does. I don't know, we'll see. Just arrived at Yashio factory. I'm gonna start changing tires and uh, everyone's just chilling here, prepping for tomorrow. A lot of the other guys that are coming tomorrow are here as well. And uh, one thing, I have to give a shout out, massive shout out to my guys over at Valino because they're doing a Halloween themed um, sticker, I guess, on their Griva tires, which I thought was kind of cool. If you guys don't know, Halloween is a huge deal in Japan. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like this year, though, with all the COVID restrictions, but look, even the logos here are orange. How freaking cool is that with a little pumpkin? Love it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I've shown this car a fair few times on the channel now and full Golfar Yashio factory aero kit which is the extra wide and over fenders here that come up like that which is what I want to put on my car eventually it's got a full HKS 2.2 stroker kit R35 um, uh, oil packs the new HKS GT3 turbo kit top mount with the 60 mil HKS external wastegate which is a 60 mil V-band by the way which is kind of crazy and um, yeah not much more to say about this thing it's going to be shredding out there tomorrow so we'll get to watch it but full Yashio factory spec as well obviously Yashio factory coilovers and everything else adjustable arms we got some brids in here the reclinables um, RV, oh sorry, um, Z33 transmission, so a CD09 is in here, which is why you've got this kind of uh, dog leg kind of style shifted that puts it back in the OEM position. Very, very cool. Very, very expensive car. They're currently just uh, clearancing uh, the frame a little bit there for his front wheels with the angle kit. Really rad guy. Fresh rubber all wrapped up in those wheels. And uh, got some more water temp meters to send for stock for Otaku Garage in Australia. Now we're heading home. So just got home and S15 was all prepped and ready. I packed all my tools and stuff in there. Decided not to really film that because that stuff's kind of boring. Now unfortunately I do have a little bit of crappy news. But it depends how you look at it. The way I'm looking at it is it means that there's probably something better for us. But uh, unfortunately, we did, uh, our application got rejected for that awesome shop we found. Um, so we are back on the hunt for another shop. Um, it sucks. Uh, I don't think there was any discrimination or anything like that. It was purely from uh, the owner picked the very first application that came in. So first serve, wait, first, best dress first serve. You know what I'm trying to say. So anyways, the owner picked the very first application and we were the third application. So from my perspective, I think that's pretty fair. So anyways, that aside, we're back on the hunt for another new shop. I think it just means that it's gonna to lead to something better. We're gonna find a better space, probably something bigger, and uh, hopefully a little bit more space outside the shop as well would be nice. So uh, I think it's just gonna to lead to better and greater things, in my opinion anyways. And that's normally how I always look at things in life. I mean, generally in the moment, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty emotional and a mess, but um, once I think about it for a little bit, normally I'm like, oh yeah, that just means something else better is around the corner. Right, babe? Yeah. Cool. You like wifey's new hair? I have a serious question though. What do you think of the chaser? Oh, I love it. Yeah? You're going to come to Evisu and come do skids in her? I'm going to teach you how to do donuts and then I'm going to do tandems with you. It's going to be yeah. great. Because it's a drift missile, right? I can yeah. Do, I can crash it. Well, just don't drive it off the edge into the river next to Kudu Kudu Land. Most people don't know that. Right next to Kudu Kudu Land at Ebisu Circuit is actually like this little ravine and a creek slash river down in the ditch there. And it's pretty deep and there's like a few little trees there. Now, there's a few instances where cars go off and fall down there and roll. And there's one instance, um, Okachan was training a young driver and it went off the edge, hit a tree, and then the car kind of bounced back up onto the circuit. So it like was like kind of leaning on the edge about to fall down, um, smashed the knuckle up and everything. But luckily it kind of bounced off that tree, which pushed it back up and left it sitting on the edge hanging. It was sketchy as. Um, and Okachan was in. Uh, the passenger seat, so the side that was leaning down, and it was a funny day. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, where was I going with that tangent? Oh, that's right, you're gonna drive the chaser, right? Mm. Yeah, you're just gonna send it? Well, first, I gotta learn how to drive it. Yeah. Second, uh, I gotta do how to do donuts, and then I'll send it. Donuts, and I, you donuts know, then figure eights, then figure you'll send eights. it. Yeah, I found out a really, uh, awesome campaign you know they're the gov government is doing the go-to campaign yeah they're doing a go-to campaign for driving school and apparently Wait, you can what? yeah you can uh take a license for like the two two weeks straight just for like jury chiman or junior so like it's like uh 1.2k uh, grand like USD. It's like it's like a thousand dollars USD yeah, it's to half do the price normal two normal. week school you walk away with your driver's license that's cool. Where is it? I have to look. Uh, I found do, you have do you have to take annual leave for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. It looks so weird with that coat hanger there. I was hanging merch up there and taking photos. <laughs> it's like a lone thing there. My number plates. We may or may not be making filler right now. 
Um, <laughs> fill the video, babe. <laughs> I do have some stuff here that I actually want to show you guys uh, that I just got from Australia. If you guys live in Australia, you can probably recognize some of these parts from Aeroflow and stuff like that. But specifically, this part from TurboSmart is really, really cool. Um, it's a turbo oil pressure regulator. What this will do is it will go in between the oil feed line and the turbo and make sure that it only ever sees 30 psi of oil pressure. Um, for the longest time now, I've suspected that a lot of my oil consumption issues are actually from my turbo. Um, right now, there's a Mumba turbo on there, a bolt-on turbo, and I suspect that the seals are just not built to handle higher, like really high oil pressure. And because I run a 15W50 weighted oil, it does build pretty high oil pressure once it starts climbing in the RPM range. And even though it has an oil restrictor, I still suspect the um, internal oil pressure of the turbo is too much and the compressor is pushing oil through the uh, charge pipe and intercooler into the engine. Um, even though like I've taken the piping off the intercooler, it doesn't seem like there's much oil in there, but I think it's passing all the way through because there's so much air and density and stuff. I think it's actually just getting all the way up into the engine um, because I can see like some little oil residue on the compressor housing on the charge charge side of it so um, I'm hoping that this may um, prevent the biggest issue with the car I do know that it is still got worn rings and something's up there because there is a 10 psi difference on five and six cylinder than the rest of the engine um, which isn't that bad but it's not great um, which actually could have been caused by this oil consumption issue because if oil is being introduced in the charge system, the, 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 not the hot side, you guys know what I'm saying. If oil is being introduced into the air-fuel mixture, it's going to be changing the octane rating and everything and messing up and can be causing detonation and knocking and stuff like that because oil burns much slower at what gas does. And if that's being added to the air-fuel mixture, specifically in like five and six where the PSI difference is, is great, greater than the rest of the engine for the compression check, um, that could be what has caused it is oil's been introduced into the burn and it's caused detonation, which has then, you know, caused other issues and things getting worn out. So... At the end of the day, this could be the solution to my problem, but it's only gonna, it's just really me experimenting and testing. And with that guys, I'm gonna wrap up today's video. I know it was pretty chill and just a bunch of stuff like behind the scenes that was getting done. Um, obviously we prepped the S15, that's ready for tomorrow's drift event, so keep an eye out for that. We're gonna get some tandem practice tomorrow, which I'm excited about. Um, and yeah, just overall a pretty relaxing day but also a lot of stuff happened behind the scenes and I feel like I was very productive. So with that guys, smash that like button, write us a comment and subscribe and I'll see you on tomorrow's video, Drifting the S15. Yeah! Just look at that.